You have a judge who has no history of dealing with people who use children for leverage in their cases, who uh, try to alienate their children from the other parents. They don't, they're not equipped, they're not skilled, they just don't know what they're doing. My name is Brian Mayer. I'm a family law attorney practicing with Real Fathers Rights out of their Corona, California office. And today I'm going to be explaining what it is that's wrong with the family court system. Now, if you find this video to be informative, please consider subscribing to the channel. There are other videos that will post like it. And uh, if you find this one helpful, you may find others helpful as well. Also, if you like this presentation, if you click on that like, it will help spread the information to others so that it can help other people just like you. If I've been practicing law for about 18 years right now, uh, I'm a certified family law trial advocacy specialist, uh, currently one of only about six or seven in the state of California. People in the family law system know that there's something wrong with it, but they don't know what it is or where it comes from. And I'm gonna tell you exactly what's going on, why it's happening and what there is that can be done about it. Now, the first thing to understand is that part of the problem is coming from the bench. That is, part of it is coming from the judges that are hearing the family court cases. To understand this, we have to understand the history of how these judges tend to get to where they are. Now, the first thing to understand is that most of the judges in our system are coming from the criminal prosecution or defense area of law. They're, they're coming from criminal practice. And you may say, well, why is that? And the answer is that for them, taking the position of a judge is a promotion. They're public servants. They have uh, these set schedules with set salaries. And once they reach a certain point, they cannot progress in their careers unless they promote to a different position. So they want to move into that higher position. They move into that judgeship position, whereas someone coming from the private practice, oftentimes to become a judge, if you have an experienced family law attorney, to become a judge, you have to take a pay cut for more responsibility. And nobody who is any good at what they do, no family law practitioner who knows what they're doing and who cares about their quality of life is going to take a pay cut for more responsibility. And so we end up with these judges coming from an entirely different sector of law who have oftentimes never touched a family law case in their entire career. They've never sat in on a family law matter. They've never had to touch child custody, deal with divorce, deal with support, deal with property division. They will literally come in essentially off the streets having never even touch the family code in their entire careers and they're asked to make decisions about your life and your situation, your finances, your children when they have zero experience doing it. Their experience comes from an entirely different realm. They don't know what they're doing. Compounding the problem is that because criminal law is such a significant component of the, uh, of the superior court's caseload, because you have such a significant component of, uh, of judges coming from the criminal realm where they're comfortable, where they're knowledgeable, where they're experienced, the family law assignments are considered the lesser desirable assignments. And so when you have a county that has 50 judges in it and where the assignments are given out based upon seniority, what you have is you have not only the least experienced attorneys, the least experienced attorneys in family law taking your your matter, but you also have the newest judges taking the matter because what will happen is they'll they'll get their years in. Uh, other judges will move on, they'll retire, and then they can get bumped up and moved into the type of cases in the courtrooms that they actually want. It's not terribly uncommon to have a situation where you're going into your family law case, you have a judge who has no experience dealing with family law except in the few months that they've been on the bench dealing with it. They're just barely even getting trained in not only the law, but how to apply it and how to exercise discretion and what looks normal. And they're not even getting into the issues that that impact family law cases. Things like the psychology uh, behind the individuals involved, personality disorders, family dynamics, the 
uh, nuances of domestic violence and allegations. They don't have the history of dealing with people who uh, use children for leverage in their cases, who uh, try to alienate their children from the other parents. They don't, they're not equipped. They're not skilled. They just don't know what they're doing. And that is certainly the first and biggest barrier going into these is that oftentimes you're just dealing with judges that don't have the experience to know what they're doing. And the worst part is that some of them don't even realize that they don't know what they're doing. And that is when you really get into some dangerous waters in terms of uh, where your case is going and entrusting your family and the outcome of your family law case to someone else, someone sitting behind the bench who oftentimes spends maybe five at most 10 minutes reading through the court papers before they make a decision that's going to affect potentially the rest of your life and your children's life. Uh, the other reason why the system doesn't work is because our system is what's called an adversarial system of justice. Now, what that means is the idea is that when we set two sides against one another, they will scorch the earth, they will destroy the other, and the court can essentially sift through the ashes of their destruction and figure out what the right outcome is going to be. If both sides are attacking each other, if they are torching each other, then the court can get all of the negative information in front of it, it can figure out what's right, what's wrong, and it can make a decision based upon that. Furthermore, our system is designed to come to the right conclusion and not the quick conclusion. Now, this is fine. All of this is fine when you're dealing with things like contract disputes, when you're dealing with things like auto accidents, or even if you're dealing with things like prosecution in a criminal context, deciding whether someone's guilty and how they should be sentenced. This does not work for families because we are dealing with children. And while this system is taking a year and a half, two years, however long to figure out what's going on, we have kids who are growing up. We have relationships that are being severed. We have relationships that are being compromised. And we have people who are on a daily basis dealing with the consequences of inaction from the court. It doesn't work well in a family context. And exacerbating all of this is that when you have this, these delays, when you have this, oh, we'll get to it eventually sort of process, when we have this being stretched out and when we pit the parties against one another, in a family law context, when the parties walk out of that courtroom, they are not done with each other. When they have children together, they're still going to be dealing with those children. Even when the kids are grown up, you're going to be dealing with holidays, weddings, grandchildren's birthdays. The, you're going to have to continue to cross paths with this other person for the rest of your life. And the system is throwing you into a situation where you have to attack one another. How toxic is that? Even if you don't have children together, even if this is just a divorce or some other marital related dispute, almost always because you are tied together as spouses, you still have friends in common. You still have other family members with whom you have a relationship. You oftentimes are just intertwined in a way that you just can't walk away and not deal with this other person. And it's all in front of a judge that oftentimes barely knows what they're doing and is barely qualified to sit on the bench, let alone deal with the complexities of not only the human component of the cases, but even the legal components of the cases. So what can be done about this? Frankly, there is one thing that you can do, and that is to make sure that you are educated about the laws and your rights. And oftentimes that means consulting with attorney, if not having an attorney represent you, because it's not just about having someone represent you who knows the law, but number one, can educate the court. Number two, can make sure that your rights are protected. And number three, knows the system well enough that they can push this case through in a way that doesn't slow you down, that eliminates every roadblock that the system has set up in order to take this slowly because you need to get to that final result. You need an attorney who can push you through to get to your final destination, not just eventually, but as fast as the system allows. And finally, you need an attorney who will be able to navigate this in a way so as to minimize 
the animosity, the resentment, the hostility that can so easily rise between parties as this is uh, as this is unfolding, so that when you leave the courtroom, you are in a better position to be able to function with that person one day again, so that they are not holding things against you, so that they can heal and move on, so that you don't have to deal with the baggage that is created by this process itself. Now, again, if you found this to be helpful, please feel free to subscribe. We'll have other videos. Feel free to like it so we can get the message out there. And if you're looking for an attorney in California, please contact Real Fathers Rights. You can reach out with me. I'd be glad reach out to me. I'd be glad to work with you. And we have so many great attorneys at this firm. You simply can't go wrong. But the most important thing is that if you need professional help, get it from somewhere. I wish you the best. Thank you.